Okay, so here we have the respiratory system model plaque. Some of the structures we can point to. Here's the hyoid bone. Okay. Here is the thyroid cartilage. This is the anterior portion of the larynx right here. This is the laryngeal prominence. Okay. Sometimes this is known as the Adam's apple, more prominent in males than it is in females. This right here is the cricoid cartilage. Okay. This membrane right here is the thyrohyoid membrane. Okay. The membrane in here would be the cricothyroid membrane. Okay. Now down here would be the trachea and we can see the cartilage rings of the trachea with the ligaments in between. Okay. This is the thyroid gland right here. Thyroid gland located inferior to the thyroid cartilage. Here we have the lungs. This is lung tissue here. And we have different numbers of lobes on each side. On the left side, this would be the left side right here. On the left side, we'd have two lobes. And then on the right side, we'd have three lobes. Okay. Now the left side, it's hypothesized that the left side has two lobes to make room for the heart. The heart sits a little bit more toward the left hand side and you can see this cardiac notch right here uh, in the superior lobe um, on the left lung. This is the diaphragm right here and this dome shaped muscular structure will contract and flatten to increase the volume of the thoracic cavity which decreases the pressure and sucks air into the lungs. This right here would be where the esophagus pierces through the diaphragm. This would be the abdominal aorta right here and this would be the inferior vena cava right here. Let's go in and look at some of the structures on the inside here. Since we're studying respiratory system, I'm going to remove the heart to get that out of the way. Now here we can see the trachea going behind these blood vessels here. Now this trachea is going to branch at the carina right here, this would be the carina, and splits into the primary bronchi. Now we've got one that goes to the left. Okay. The left primary bronchus is narrower, it's longer, and it's more horizontally oriented. The secondary bronchi, or lobar bronchi, would bring air into the lobes. We've got the superior and inferior lobar bronchi bringing air into the superior and inferior lobes of the left lung. This right here is the right primary bronchus and this right primary bronchus is wider, it's more vertically oriented, and it's shorter. So if someone were to aspirate a piece of food, if that food were to go into the trachea instead of the esophagus, most of the time that food would end up in the right lung because of the orientation and size of this right primary bronchus. Here we can see three secondary bronchi branching off this primary bronchus on the right hand side and those again are lobar bronchi and they would bring air into the three different lobes of the right lung. This is the esophagus right here and we would be able to see the esophagus pierce the diaphragm and come out down below. Right, the stomach would sit right here and the fundus of the stomach would sit up here above the entrance of the esophagus into the stomach. Here, this gray structure is membrane right, and this membrane is right on the surface of the lungs. So this would be visceral pleura. Okay. The parietal pleura would line the inside of the rib cage, and if my hands represented the rib cage, that parietal pleura, that membrane, would be right on the surface of my hand. So the space in between, or the potential space in between, that would be the pleural cavity. And pleural fluid would be in there. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.